random lists. Is all about lists Waypoint Overland has created on an array of topics, such as top 5 national parks, top 10 trails in the United States, top 10 fill in the blank. I think you get it. Some lists will be pure fun, and others very informational. But they all will have a connection to overlanding in some way. We're very interested in hearing your suggestions for upcoming lists in the comments. Now, here's our random list. My random list this week is my top five events across the United States for overlanders to attend. My criteria for this list is camping opportunities, location, opportunities beyond just the event, and what the event has to offer. And with that, we start with the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The Balloon Fiesta is the largest balloon fiesta in the world with over 500 hot air balloons that fly each year. It features many different events held over multiple days. They have morning glow on the first day and themed mass ascensions. This is easily one of the most significant tourist attractions and events in New Mexico. I love the options I have as an overlander attending this event. I can attend the event and camp in the surrounding areas in any direction. Or if you have a camper or a rooftop tent, you can camp adjacent to the event and attend or not. And my favorite option, which I will be doing this year, is check the weather for predicted winter pat wind patterns, strategically camp in the desert, either dispersed or find something more formal, then just open my window at dawn and enjoy the mass ascension hoover above me. At number two, I have the Burning Man in the desert of Nevada. Now imagine a festival that isn't a usual festival like the others because almost everything in the city is created by citizens who participate actively in this experience, and there's no trace of the event nine days later. Burning Man is a giant free love hippie arts and music festival out in the middle of the Nevada desert, known for its mass of temporary sculptures and the random things you can find from all of the weird themed booths to the outrageous vehicles. And... A place to camp here will be no problem. I have a number three High Sierra Music Festival in Quincy, California. This music festival includes arts and crafts, parades, yoga, movement workshops, and after-hour shows in a serene forest setting. Past musical lineups included names like Andrew Bird and Keller Williams. And being a kid-friendly event, parents can use on-site daycare to keep the kids safe and entertained. A big thing about this event is that camping is encouraged, and this is definitely the place for it. At number four, I have the Maine Lobster Festival in Rockland, Maine. Not the biggest event in the world, but one of my favorites. Basically, you have nine huge tents, the world's greatest lobster cooker, a sea goddess, top-notch entertainment, a big parade, crate races, fine art, crafts, people, vendors, Navy ship tours, all-you-can-eat pancakes, over 20,000 pounds of lobster. Topping all that off is that it's located on the coast of Maine. There's plenty of parking right across the street from the event with security. I've left my rig there twice and felt very comfortable, although I did periodically leave out and take a, a peek. Always remember, the opinion you follow should be you. Use your own discretion as an overlander. And when it's over... You have all of Maine to explore, and Vermont, and New Hampshire, upstate New York, and northern Appalachia. At number five, I have the running of the bulls at the Cayenne Frontier Days in Wyoming. Frontier Days is an outdoor rodeo and western type of celebration held annually. This is one of the largest events of its kind and attracts about 200,000 people each year. As entertaining as the rodeo is, for me, the biggest reason by far to go is the running of the bulls they do, similar to the famous running of the bulls that happens in Spain. They have nightly concerts and comedy acts, a fair with rides, games, and multiple food vendors. A special part of the event is the free pancake breakfast. Well, that's my list. Do you agree or disagree? Do you have your own list? Share in the comments. Let's keep it rolling with the communications. And speaking of communications, the Midland ER310 E Plus Ready Emergency Crank Weather Radio is a must for emergency preparedness. 
The ER310 keeps you informed in case of severe weather or civil emergency. Just one minute of cranking produces 45 minutes of radio time and 30 minutes of flashlight use. Plus, its durable body means that it can stand up to rainy weather or a drop onto a hard surface. It has multiple sustainable power sources, solar, a hand crank, and rechargeable battery. But you always have a backup option of using a common AA battery. It has a bright flashlight that uses Cree LEDs. There's an SOS flashlight beacon. It activates Morse code for emergency assistance. You can charge your devices through the USB connection. It even has an ultrasonic dog whistle that may help assist search and rescue teams in locating you during an emergency situation. Here, we're experiencing avalanches in the mountains, and a dog whistle may be your only hope. 32 hours of long battery life under normal use with this rechargeable battery. And its main purpose for me is its NOAA weather radio with alert. The weather alerts sound when issued on local channels. I posted on Instagram in one of my trips to Colorado this year about encountering severe weather. There were weather alerts going off on my Midland GM, GMRS radio all day. My words wouldn't have been so poetic about the experience if I had been surprised by the weather. Because the information I had was so up to date, I was able to squeeze in trail time to engineer pass and head back to camp. And early the next day, I went to Stony Pass, the whole time being able to stay away from the worst of the weather pattern. I hunkered down in my rooftop tent during some brutal hail, lightning, snow, rain, and thunder all in one night. I was listening to the latest up-to-date info the entire time on my Midland ER310 weather radio. I felt that at the altitude where I was camping, I'd be fine. But if things changed, I would know in enough time to evacuate. This enabled me to have a great time and avoid the worst of the weather. As a matter of fact, when I woke up, I enjoyed a sunrise that only comes after a weather and a storm. It's ideal for emergency preparedness, overlanding, camping, and everyday use. It's something you should have at home and on your travels, in my opinion. 